Hello, everyone, and welcome to, no, this is not Keep Crawling with Mike and Brendan. This oh. is Zero Level Funnel Seminar on the most auspicious of evenings, DC Day Eve. So, woo, so thank you very much for tuning in and joining us. Uh, at this point, usually I say, I hope you can all hear us. <laughs> so, so uh, but we actually have, uh, we actually have uh, competent producing going on at this point. So it's not just Brendan and I like doing our little bug and pony show. So um, for those of you who don't know, uh, I would like to introduce myself and uh, we will go around uh, who we have here this evening and basically talk about what gives us the right to talk to you about zero level funnels. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Michael Curtis. I have been working for Goodman Kings for over a decade now, and I have two published funnels underneath my belt. I have uh, the, the the first level slash zero level funnel known as Frozen in Time, which is your you know, Neanderthals meet time traveler zero level funnels. And I also have a, uh, I have a uh, Sour Spring Hollow, which I wrote for uh, the Shutter Mountain box set, which, uh, which is rather, rather creepy and rather popular from, from what I understand, or at least I've been told anyway by, by nice people. And uh, I have also have written about three or four unpublished ones for various other reasons, including my War Crawl one, which I did last summer, which is not only a funnel, but how to choose your alignment. And uh, and a hex crawl funnel, which I've been working for my Iron Age Brutal Land session. So that's what gives me the right to be here. And joining me are some fellow names. So kick it off, Mr. Brendan. Who are you? Hi, uh, I am Brendan LaSalle, and I too have written some funnels for uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics. Um, I, I've done three. Um, I have done Hole in the Sky was my first one, and then. Um, the uh, uh, Curse of Heart of the World Ender, and then I wrote one for Mutant Crawl Classics. Uh, I don't remember what we wanted to call on that one. Uh, just blanked on it. It's not the name I started with. Uh, it's um, uh, Sneaking the Post Humans is what we wound, what, what we wound up with. And uh, so there you go. So even though I can't remember all of the titles, I, uh, I have my, I'm, I'm here because Mike said I could be, so that's cool. So thank you. Marcio, <laughs> uh, are all right. Well, my name is Marzio Mushedre, and I have written one funnel. Uh, so far, that has been published, uh, Death Slaves of Eternity, which is a, a very overlong, uh, um, I guess, sword and sorcery um, funnel. But uh, I'm in total funnel mold right now because I just finished writing another one that is going to be published in the future. And I've been doing some play testing, and I have a play test for it tomorrow. So uh, I'm ready to go. And lastly, hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm Terry Olson, and I have no right to be here, but I'm happy they invited me anyway. Um, I've written three funnels. Uh, probably the most recent is the tournament for Bride of Cyclops Con uh, that I directed the writing, wrote some of the encounters. Marzio wrote an encounter for that, as a matter of fact. And that was Return to the Starless Sea. And then I wrote uh, Escape from the Shrouded Fen for Purple Sorcerer. And that's like a two-act adventure where act one is a funnel and Act 2 is a level 1 adventure, and then um, a rare and hard-to-find funnel called Attack of the Plane Jumper that's in the Goodman Games Gazette, Volume 1, at number 8, March <laughs> 2017, for all you collectors. <laughs> all right. Well, so uh, so as you can see, we have a collection, a cabal of, of, of wise uh, souls to be uh, to, talking tonight about funnels to answer your questions as they come up, and uh, so... We'll just get down to the bones of it. We've, we've noticed that there's a lot of people who have gotten into DCC over the last year. For some reason, people had time on their hands. I don't know what that was, but you know, it seems like we've got a lot of people coming into the into you know not necessarily the hobby, but playing DCC for the first time. And DCC is a little different from some other role playing games because of things like the zero level funnel. So people have had a lot of questions about you know like you know, what's the best funnel, what should I do on the funnel, and all the rest of that stuff. So we figured that spending about an hour tonight or just talking about the funnel stuff and kind of giving you all some advice about writing funnels, about running funnels, what a funnel should do, and such, you know, would be, you know, a good, a good you know, kind of an appetizer for DCC Day tomorrow. So, so, uh, so I think we'll start off with, like, what is, what do you guys think uh, is, what do you think are the requirements for like a good funnel? Like either be, be it one that you're writing or like a published one that's out there already uh, to give some people a taste of like what they, what they should expect or at least hope to encounter if they're, uh, as they are throwing themselves into the beat grinder that is the DCC character generation mm -hmm. uh, for process. So um, anybody have a, any insight to begin with? It should be a funnel, right? It should, it should be deadly. 
right? Yeah. They should they should finish it with significantly fewer PCs than they start with. Yes. Right. So yeah. so definitely definitely lethality because you know we because we can't have all the, can't have all these these stray characters running around. <laughs> no. I, I feel like a proper funnel has to go over the top, have at least one over the top creature or encounter that is like you know the, 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 one of the beautiful things about the funnel is that you know. When the characters have at most, at the absolute crazy to think of, like seven hit points, you know, monsters may as well do a die 30 damage or, you know, have four attacks and do a die 60. They may as well because pretty much any hit's going to be lethal on most characters. So I think it's, I think it's good to have one thing in there that's just like they have to actually outwit or out clever or find some way to work around to let, you know, to sort of like, you know, let people establish that sometimes in Dungeon Crawl Classics, you know, you don't face everything head on. Sometimes you have to be smart about encounters. Mm -hmm. I will go uh, to kind of go off of uh, Brandon's point. Uh, funnel should be epic, um, like huge in scope they can be. And uh, what a great opportunity to introduce things that are way above the character's level, like introducing patrons or deities, um, uh, magic, um, things that you know, these simple folks should have no business dealing with and they find themselves in a situation where they're forced to or need to to survive, interact with these things. And uh, and so I think epic. It has to be epic. You can't go around and, 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 and clean out, you know, Farmer Brown's uh, barn full of rats. They got in, they got to encounter a deity on like at some point or a patron or something uh, in the adventure. You know what? I'm actually going to disagree with you a little there, Marzio. Okay. That I, I do not believe that a funnel has to be like full on epic coolness that what DCC is. And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact is that what I believe a funnel should be. And, uh, and you know, feel free to disagree with me, you know, obviously. Uh, but uh, it is my opinion that funnels should be. I think I think I mean funnels are, are definitely a, a necessary part of the DCC game, but I, I think we have well you know I think there has been a trend that there's been a lot of emphasis on the funnel in DCC, and I think there's been a little bit too much emphasis, quite quite frankly, on DCC. And I think a lot of that is self perpetuating the fact we have like the death stamps and like you know like we we run a lot of funnels and stuff at conventions and everything like that. So you know people when they think DCC they think the funnel, but for my idea of the funnel, the funnel should be like one and done. Like, like the perfect thing for me, like, uh, like is to make up characters, run a funnel, like session one, like, you know, like, like get everything done in a single session and then start playing DCC is, you know, so I, I think that if I was going to be introducing gods and stuff like that, I would wait until first level. Like my, my, my main thing for, for first level would be like, you know, lethality. You know, to kind of like to, to to weed things down, definitely throw cool stuff in, but I don't think we necessarily have to go to that level. But you know, but that's but that's my my opinion is that you know, funnel is part of character creation, and when you're making up a character, you don't want to be making up a character for like two sessions. Like you know, it's like you want to actually be playing the game. Like you know, if we were playing if we we're playing like AD and D, like all right, we'll roll for ability scores this week, and then next week we'll choose character classes and buy equipment. You know, no, that that's that's my thought on it. So. So is it fair to say, Mike, for you, the, the funnel is part of character generation? Very much so, yeah. I mean, because yeah. it is it is taking it is taking the place of like the backstory and you know, like all the all the normal stuff which goes into kind of modern D like modern role playing, you know, uh, character creation, where you're picking your feats and you're picking your background and all the rest of that stuff, you know. And this is like you have your, you know, it, it's 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 you know, I always go back to the traveler thing. You know, because I mean, like Traveler kind of was the first funnel where you had to choose, okay, like, am I going to be a scout? You know, do I want to spend four years in the scouts and then I'll make my role and, oh, you died of botulism on the planet Lupus 7. You know, it's like, and then, no, now you got to make up a new character, you know? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, I, you know, to me, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's okay to set up like expectations and you can definitely use the funnel to like introduce elements that you like, you want to touch upon in the campaign. But I don't necessarily think that, you know, it has to be like this massive, like, like Sailors, like Sailors is a first, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a funnel, but it's also a first level adventure. So it is, it is much larger because it can be run as a first level adventure. But like um, Portal Under the Stars, that's almost like the perfect funnel length for me. That's like, what, nine, ten rooms or something, you know, around that. And if you're thinking if you're running, if you're running, you know, kind of by the book experience points, you know, an average counter gets you two XP and you need ten. 
So theoretically, if you run if you run a straight line that's five, you know, if you run through a meat grinder that's five encounters, it's not very entertaining, but it gets the job done. Yeah. See, I love it because we are looking at it from a different perspective, you and I. Um, mm. Like if you look at Death Slaves, um, what a, for me, a funnel is, all, including character generation, it's also a way to um, introduce your players to what your campaign is going to be like. So it, um, you can have like, uh, you know, hinted at for later exploration, like things like Elder World Science or, or Forbidden Magic, or like I said, a patron or a deity. So yeah, the fun, the, I snuck on in this panel because my funnel is like two sessions worth of funnel. Right. Um, for, for that reason, right? <laughs> there's all, there's mystery. Like, I think a funnel should have everything an adventure has. It should have combat, traps, puzzles, role play opportunities. I, uh, um, I understand what you're saying. Like, you want to do a quick and dirty just character generation. But I, I like to maybe do a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, foreshadowing of what the campaign's no, going to look like in the I'm, future. I'm not against that at all. In fact, I believe right. that's, that's what the case is. But what I'm saying is that you don't need Crom to show up in room two when you can no. have like, when you can have the amulet with the two snakes, you know, I mean. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You, you I know. know, I mean, because yeah. that. At that least is, wait till room four for that. Least, yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. Now. At least. <laughs> you know, I mean, because I, it, it, to me, it's just like, okay, so now, I mean, I think, I think the idea of, of ad, definitely adding, add, you know, questions and mysteries should be part of the funnel right. because that is all going to lead into the actual gameplay. And, and, you know, I know, I've, you know, I'm sure everybody has had that, like that DM where like, okay, you're going to play in my campaign. Here's my backstory, you know, with like the important rumors that you have to read and everything like that. And that's fine, but I would more like, you know, show, don't tell, you know, it's a, so which is, that's the perfect time for the funnel you now, but you know, I, I, you know, I, I, me personally, I would like to actually get to playing DCC rather than spend two sessions like in the funnel and like, you know, uh, we're, we're down to like my last guy, you know, that kind of thing. On right. five. But yeah. that, that's again, personal opinion. No, uh, it's, it, there is a fun thing though, you know, as far as not having a, a, a hard set upper limit, um, that you can use the funnel for a lot of foreshadowing, you know, like you can, you can, you know, if going Marzio's route, right? If you want to use something that's super powerful, you can have them come in, stomp on a few PCs, and then be gone. And mm. you know, he he can come back again at level one, level two, whenever whenever the 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 players have a chance to take them on. But it's it's a great, it is a good opportunity to uh, to establish a villain or or whatever. You know, give give some chance of foreshadowing for later in the campaign. Mm. Yeah, no, I I, to I totally agree with that. You know. I'm just, I'm just saying is that, you know, um, it, for me personally, I would like to actually be playing. I mean, because, well, this might go, this might go down to, to a follow-up question of what's your opinion on leveling up during a funnel? Right. You right. know, because, because to me, I personally, I'm, I'm not, on, I'm not in the school of you should level up during a funnel. Like, you know, you should be like the funnel should be that, like that Satori moment. It should be that, you know, that, that, that completely change your life from being, you know, a gung farmer, you know, and a turtle farmer to like actually being an adventurer. Oh yeah. So yeah, so I, think, I agree. You know, yeah. So well, when I run sailors, they don't level up before the ziggurat. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Because and so so I mean so if you if you're you know if you that's why I think it's like you should save like the really neat like for like theoretically any first level um, adventure could be a funnel, but I would never run like say intrigue at a court of chaos as a funnel. You know, it's just because the for me the expectations as being a first level character, being being a mob of zero level characters are are different. I would not have like a mob of zero level characters dealing with the host of chaos. You know, yeah. But partially for the reason like the host of chaos would not have anything to do with like a mob of you know, but you know, so yeah. Yeah, yeah I feel like a, I feel like a one session funnel is you know that, that is very decent, but you can cram a whole lot into one session. You know what I'm saying? You can. There's a lot you can do with one. I, I am uh, in the same mindset where I don't typically give out experience points or allow people to level up during a character funnel. Um, but uh, I know, I know, you know, like Daniel Bishop does, some of the other, some of the other fellows do uh, as well. And, um, I, you know, at, at some point, I think if you do that, at some point, you're going to have suddenly, it's like, stop. I had to level up two of my guys and he had to level up three of his guys. And we have to, you know, Mm -hmm. uh you know I, I like that kind of like that springboard thing you finish the funnel and boom because I, I i've been seeing this a lot on social media people are having like new players are having like a meta issue like 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 why is my why is my gong farmer suddenly able to know four spells like you know like like why did that happen i'm like me personally is because 
if I was running it, we would have the funnel and then we would have kind of like, I would have like the training montage or something, or I would, yeah. you know, like ask the players like, okay, it, it's, it's been six months since the events of like the, the keep of chaos, you know, mm -hmm. tell me what you've been up to, or, you know, like, or, you know, or would work with them and say, yeah, there's a crazy guy who lives down by the swamp and, you know, he smokes ferrets and, you know, he yeah. has a, you know, like, you know, like, oh, you know, like, oh, I go learn, go learn him. And, you know, that's, that's where you get your spells from or something. But, you know, what I like so to do is, oh, sorry. No, go but ahead. Go ahead, Mars. What I like to do is add things uh, thematically in the adventure that would explain why people become that level later mm -hmm. or that, that character class later. So they'll find a grimoire or a, a shrine to some deity. And then when they level up, um, and actually I'll let them use, like, for example, if they fire them in a grimoire, they can cast those spells as a scroll. And then there's also that player decision that's like somebody who's hoping to be a, a, um, a wizard. Do I waste these during the funnel? knowing that they'll burn up like a scroll or do I save this as my grimoire when I get out? So it adds that little question or dynamic to the adventure as well as gives them a thematic reason that they're a wizard when they come out. And then you can, of course, do your training montage. You're not going to become a wizard instantaneously, but they have yeah. a book or they have a shrine, like a holy symbol that they found or even writing on a wall that, you know, opens up something in their mind to, you know, sp special powers or magic. So that's what I like to do with, with the funnels for that. I Thank you. I'm in complete agreement. There should there should be lots of little trinkets and stuff, you know, or you know, stuff that leads into, you know, like oh, you find like a dead thief, you know, has been impaled on, you oh, know, yeah. like on, on a spear or something, and and he has these weird looking tools on him, and you know, so of course, you know, eventually there'll be a discussion, and oh, well, we'll give it to give it to this person, and that person dies a horrible death, you know, they loot his body, and then that goes over to somebody else, and then eventually, right. you know, somebody who was one of the survivors of the best agility might say, all right, I'm going to try to pick this lock because there's a cool thing that we can see through those bars. And then, of course, when, you know, when the funnel is over, we're talking, okay, what are you guys going to do? Like, who's going to level up? And like, I think, you know, Becky's going to be a thief because Becky picked that lock, you know, and Becky right. had full agility, you know, so. Yeah. I don't know if it's the first funnel, but a, a, certainly an, an early funnel from the 80s is uh, Aaron Alston's Treasure Hunt, mm -hmm. which is N4. Yep. And uh, and in, in N4, this is AD and D. You start with zero level AD and D characters, mm -hmm. and there are things through the adventure that allow you to sort of emulate different class abilities. And the the DM actually has a tracker and is keeping <laughs> track of what class abilities you've used. And when you level up, your class is sort of determined by the actions that you took during that level like, zero portion. That's, that's wow. what I'm gonna say. It's like one of the original funnels with far too much paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love the idea that I leveled up and now I'm a first level crap your pants run away guy. You know what I mean? Like, because that's a lot of what my guys might have done in, you know. Mm. <laughs> that's got to be a class, right? You yeah. just run faster when you level up. Yeah, just, you pick up that speed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know, that. that, that Hey, there, there, there's something that reduces in a funnel, you know, like a, 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 you know, an injury that subduct, you know, that reduces five feet off of your, your movement speed, you know, yeah. so, so, so suddenly everybody's moving faster than Joe and Joe's, uh-oh, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, when yeah, the big yeah. boulder is suddenly unleashed or, you know, <laughs> so oh, yeah. poor Joe, you know. <laughs> I always, I like to include things in funnels that will actually like, sort of like, change the character permanently, like going forward, you know what I mean? Like like leave some things oh, in yeah. there. Like, you know, hole in the sky, you have the opportunity to actually like re-roll like your, your lucky sign, you know, your star has changed. You, you know, if you roll well enough in that, you might even have a new name and identity. I love the idea that you go through this and now cosmically you are a different being, you know, coming out on the other side. And I did the same, it's almost a parody of that in um, uh, uh, the Curse and Heart of the World Ender because like, you actually can get these weird mutations that like, you know, you know, you, you could have, you might, you might come up with gills or, or whatever and such at the end of them and such. And I feel like it makes people sort of like very attached to their individual characters and like they love them and then they get crushed and that's meaningful. You know what I mean? Like that's, you know. yeah. So. And that actually reminds me one thing about Hole in the Sky that uh, influenced me and was a bit of an eye opener was Brendan, you had some creature in it. I, I Forgive me, it's been a while, so I'm having trouble remembering. But you had some shot. some big bad that would come down and kill a couple PCs and then get out of yep. dodge. It would it wouldn't stick around for a whole fight, but it would just you know harass the 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 PCs and then 
get out. And I thought that was a great technique. And that's something that, that you can do in funnels. If you do want to use something the PCs have no hope of conquering, just have it kill a few just to mess with them and then get out of there. I thought that was, in, what was that? Uh, he's called Kerr Maxima, and he is a, uh, a giant animated jack-o'-lantern with, you know, a green, filled with green eldritch flame. Uh, he's like the guardian. And it's, it's what he's really there to do is to, to scare people away from the prison realm that the, uh, the hole in the sky leads to. So he'll kill somebody and then politely ask you to leave and then, you know, kill somebody else if you don't leave by, you know, and sort of like keep after it and keep after it, you know. Uh, yeah, that's a, you know, I, I, sometimes I feel like, you know, for everything else, Hole in the Sky very likely will be the thing that I'm remembered for after, you know, when they roll my montage after, you know, uh, <laughs> that that's probably going to be it. And Kerr Maxima, I think it's like everyone's favorite monster of that. So, you know, cool. I had a lot of fun role playing and that's for darn, that's for darn sure. Mm. <laughs> So, you know, um, this is kind of not the same thing that Brenda did with uh, with his adventure, but it, with uh, Frozen in Time, I, I I purposely put kind of on display, like early in the adventure, there's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And right. I, I always call the Tyrannosaurus Rex, that's, that's Chekhov's Tyrannosaurus Rex, because, you know, because you introduce a Tyrannosaurus Rex and you're like, you totally. know, the players are just like, <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> That thing, is, that thing is gonna come alive at some point, you know. <laughs> the entire time the adventure's going on, it's like, all right, we're gonna push that button. All right, I'm gonna push that button. The Tyrannosaurus Rex in that room, you know. It's like, so, so the the idea of that, okay, yeah, well, you know, I mean, you can do as, as I say, you can do as a first level adventure, but as a zero level character, you're like, somebody's gonna get eaten by that thing. Like some of us, you know, you know. So, so having that ever present threat is also like a great way, at least, if, at, you know, also if you're trying to motivate them, you know, it's like, it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, let's get out of here before you know the crazy thing that's obviously is going to come alive at any given moment you know activate yeah. so you know yeah that, that's, that's, that's a good way to you know like uh like like uh pt barnum in his museum had the big this way to the egress sign like oh let's go see what the egress is and of course that was the exit you know that's like, <laughs> yeah. i'm i'm working in Chekhov's dinosaur at some point <laughs> look, look for it it's coming <laughs> oh i love that yeah. Now, let me ask you guys this. Do you ever think of the funnel as being kind of a mini game, like its own thing, almost separate from regular DCP? Uh, I mean, I do in the sense that it's, it is its own. Like I, like I said, my opinion is that it's part of character creation, you know, and yeah. it, it, it has, it has, it, ha it should have effects on the campaign, but I don't think it should be you know, like, I don't think it should be the emphasis of it. It's like, like any mini game that you're playing in a video game. It's like, oh, well, you know, this, you know, I can also play Blackjack in, you know, in Dead, you know, Red Dead Revolver or something like that, you know, like, but you're not playing Red Dead Revolver to play, you know, Blackjack in the, in the saloon. Sure, you're sure. there to shoot people, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So. I don't know. I've, maybe, I, for me, I, I've used it as sort of a, a training session for new players because I found that that a lot of players um, think that what's written on their character sheet is all that they can do. And so, you know, I, I appreciate the funnel. There's almost nothing on the character sheet except for abilities, really. And yeah. sort of new players kind of wrap their heads around um, trying to figure stuff out. You know, what, what, what can they use the environment for? You know, they, they tend to think a bit more tactically. And then I find that when I do give them a fully loaded PC sheet, then they're not as attached to it. You know, they're not looking for that one ability in order to do what they want. They just say, yeah. uh, you know. I gotta... uh, that's, that's exactly right. I was thinking the exact same thing. I like the idea. It introduces DCC and, uh, you know, the, the not the mechanics, but the concept of the game. And um, when you have four characters on one eight by 11, right, there's not a lot that you can look for in there. So I, I love to see them interact with the environment and find cool and new ways to use a beehive or where right. or wheel of cheese and, and it just it opens up an entire different way of gaming really or mindset in gaming and then yeah. that that hopefully spills over into the campaign when when you guys start yeah yeah you keep up that resourcefulness and not just think oh well, what weapons what spells right. what, what you know you know feats or whatever you have yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think it's oh good no, 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 go ahead. Okay. I, I was just going to say is that I, I find it interesting that a lot of times when I'm running a funnel for like my own 
self edification for my own games. So I literally, I have to remind players like you have starting money. You can buy stuff. You know, it's like you can't <laughs> buy a lot of stuff. But most people are like, I got a goat and cheese dip and a ten foot pole. I am ready to go. You know, it's like it's yeah. like, like who, who needs fire spikes? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else it does too? I'm um, sorry. It, it does. It it maybe teaches you that your stats really don't matter. You know, you don't. Yeah. Um, well, not, they don't. In the yeah. Well, yeah. But for some people, <laughs> when they first look at that eight by, it's shocking when you start seeing sixes and sevens on mm. on, on stats, oh, yeah. and they're like, "Well, what am I going to do with this guy?" Well, sure enough, when they start playing the adventure and they start, you know, thinking outside of the box, those sixes and sevens or elevens or seventeens, they don't matter. They really don't matter. Um, it's what you come up with during the adventure, and I think that carries through for DCC as well. Right. I mean, because considering most of your stats are going to be either way, either somewhere between minus one, no modifier, or plus one, you know, that's not really a, that's not really a big swinging, right. you know, section. No, I mean, in one of the game, I think, uh, I think Tim, Tim, he had like uh, in my in the game I ran last summer, Tim Deshane was playing like 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 we had like perfect things for like three warriors. He had like a like a strength of like seventeen or something like that. But his like and his intelligence was twelve. But he said, I'm gonna play, you know, I'm gonna play wizard. You know, it's like we have three warriors. Like, you know, it's like I could be an awesome warrior, but like I could also be a, an average wizard. So, you know, so we had a muscle wizard running around, and you know, we created, yeah. you know, created a patron, the first muscle wizard patron, and everything. We made a ball <laughs> based on that, you know. So, yeah, yeah. The bank of spell burn, that guy. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that, that's what he was looking at. Sure. It's like I have a big bank that I can spell burn, you know. Yeah. So. Oh. That's some forward thinking, you know, planning. I love that, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so, um, so I, I, th- I think we can all agree uh, something that a, a good funnel definitely needs, besides all the stuff we've been talking about, is a way to replace PCs because there's always somebody who has terrible, terrible luck. You know, there's all yeah. you know, like when I when I uh, when I originally did the play testing for uh, Sour Spring uh, Sour Spring Hollow, there is like one of the er- first encounters. There is maybe a, a hut, which maybe is not a hut, you know, and I had one, like, you know, basically something happens. Everybody starts booking for cover. And during the play test, one person was just like, I like, I'm running into that house. Like all of four of my guys are running into the house and literally in, in like the first 20 minutes would have lost all four of their characters. So mm-hmm. like I had to make an adjustment. Yeah. Like, okay. The house will eat, only eat the first two people who go there. So, you know, so. It's full um, now. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Sailors on the Starless Sea has captives that can be you know rescued and added to the party. Um, you know, uh, any anybody else have have used any tricks to like introduce you know uh, like replacement PCs? Yeah, well, we I guess for the tournament um, there was a scoring so that you know for the for the tournament there was a big mob um, coming in on on the keep and and. The party had two options. They could either draw PCs from the mob behind them, which came with the scoring penalty, um, or a lot of the encounters had retrievable PCs built into them, right? But they were they were there was a risk um, mm. obtained in in getting a PC that way. But I think it's almost any encounter you can find a way to build a PC into. You know, they could be they could be in a stomach not yet digested. They could be you know, uh, they could be part of a rug. I mean, they, whatever, right? They could be hanging from the ceiling as an ornament, or they could be prisoners. I mean, there's tons, there's tons of ways to work them in there. One or two PCs I, to get. So, I, I, I just had an idea, and feel free, feel free to steal this for anyone who's watching all, all at home. But I was just thinking about paranoia, the old, uh, the old RPG paranoia, where like mm-hmm. if you lost all your characters, you get new. Like every one of your characters had like a set amount of clones. But in true DCC style, it's like that plus the uh, the Michael Keaton movie multiplicity. So like, like you like you can replace your character with a, with, a, with a clone, but like it's a little dumber or a little weaker or something than the character. You decide. <laughs> so you can even you can even like you only get one character. Like like you could all like the funnel could be you're all like wizard like simulacrums who are escaping the lab, and the idea is to get out of the wizard tower. And anytime you die, like you get like a new homunculus grows out of your body, but it's a little yeah. worse because it's like one Xerox copy down the line, you know. So like so you know, like, dude, that you, is the next dying earth funnel. Yeah. They're, they're all they're all vat things. The vat things escape. Vat things there it is. Woo! There it is. And they get. And one is dumber than the next. The idea is, the idea is to get it. out with as few as death, so you don't end up like a stumbling, you know, like, like like a like a vegetable, you know, with a, like a six strength. You know, <laughs> there you go. I love that. Yep. Uh, 
I put in uh, for for death slaves when I had the the respawn point. Um, it was the the actual service mortem, the death slaves that lived in the crypt. But what I also did is I added their own rumor table. So when you got your new character, you kind of started once again with a whole different set of rumors and kind of almost objective than the first guys. So there was a little bit of a distinction there. Um, I just thought it'd be, you know, something different, something a little bit cool that you get a new character and then you get a little bit more info about what's going on down here and maybe a little bit uh, a different um, drive or perspective of the adventure. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm curious how you guys approach something that that uh, that I was sort of on the fence about when I was uh, writing uh, Shrouded Fen is is that was how to incorporate abilities that higher level PCs might have, uh, you know, because for for DCC rules it's written if you're not trained in something you're rolling a D10, right? So it's like if if there's a lock that needs to be picked, if if there's a trap, you know, some of the like basic things we take for granted. These guys are rolling D10s, and the odds of them even getting an average thing done well is is very, very slim, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I sort of had broken locks and partially disarmed traps and things like that in order to make the DC low enough that a D10 could do it. But have, have you guys done anything different to in, incorporate things like that? Uh, no, no. I mean, I really think it's like the, the one of the greatest things. Again, if you, uh, this is my opinion, that the funnel was somewhat something separate of it. So you can uh, you play with DCs like whatever you want. Like yeah, that lock, that's a complex lock. Is DC five? You know, it's like <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, because who's gonna know? I mean, they're you know, yeah, they're, yeah. it's the same. You know, it's the same thing of you know of a train like a somebody who has like a locksmith. You know, I mean, you know, like a, a DC ten is your average thief lock, but you know. It's just yeah. like this was this like the really crappy locksmith did all the installation here. It was the lowest bidder for the wizard. <laughs> he did shoddy work, or, or it's broken, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the same. I I go to the same thing about like when I'm assigning like um uh uh like attack modifiers. It's like you know it's like you can have like a crazy ass monster, but it's okay to like, but they have no attack modifier, you know, or you know, I mean, or or the or as Randy said, they got a plus thirty. Doesn't make any difference. You know, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, I guess it depends on like, you know, how, how you want to approach things. Yeah. You know, Speaking you, of that, it seems like one untapped resource you, I, th that I notice a lot in, in adventures is not enough use of the die chain for the for the action dice. You know, a lot of people are really sort of of uh, attached to do a D20 for the for the for the action dice for their monster. But but. You know, in the funnel, you can have weakling things with D14 action die or D12 action die, right? I mean, you can, you know, along those same lines. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, that, that is true. Uh, but I think the other, but again, I think that I, it's that fine line of like how, like, because uh, we have to approach like the lethality of a funnel. Yeah. Same, but like it's that, that delicate line of like how lethal is lethal. And like, you know, because, because you really don't want to get to the point where like, uh, you know, like, you know, 20 adventures went in and two came out because then you got to run another funnel again. You right. know, somebody gets, you know, so lucky. So, right. uh, yeah. Right. So, T Terry, to uh, what, what I did is uh, go on uh, occupation to um, not even have a player make a roll if it fits their occupation. So they would get whatever, you know, instead of making having to roll a D10 to hit a D8. Yeah, totally. If the, if the person's uh, 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 whatever, a tailor, then they automatically, it'll be written in the adventure, they automatically know that the clothes this person's wearing is outdated. So it's like 400 year old suit. So, you know, it might allude to this guy being undead or something, you know, why is yeah. he wearing something yeah. so old? Where I just yeah. dispense of the role for the, for the actual um, occupation. If it fits their occupation, I just dispense with the role and give them the info. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and then everyone idea. else can roll for the DC, whatever uh, it might yeah. be. Yeah, I just want to pop in real quick and say thank you, Papa Joe Mambo, for subscribing and uh, for, for being in the Twitch chat and for hanging out with us tonight. And, uh, and I should have said this earlier, but hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell and we'll keep sending you cool stuff. All right. Now I said that I've done my due diligence. You can check that box off. <laughs> you can tell who on the panel here has 27 Twitch shows a week. You know. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> oh. 
um, yeah. So also, uh, and if you are if you are watching this live and not watching this Twitch, if you do have questions, uh, we do have a weather eye kind of on what the chat is going on here. And you know, I think I know we we have some questions that popped up, but I think we've already answered them. But if you if anything, you know, um, we we can't go completely till nine o'clock tonight because we have a we have another uh, show at yeah, nine o'clock. Right, right. Things. And so we're kind of doing like convention, like be considerate and leave the table before you know the group mm -hmm. is standing there. You know, get really to give us the Greyhawk blanket party. So, uh, so yeah, so, but, uh, so, but, uh, but we'll, we'll try to get, we'll try to get out of here and, and hopefully have, ho hopefully, hopefully you've learned something before we all go. I want to do, the, I want to do the, the Fat Albert thing, but you know, that's there, we can't do Fat Albert anymore. It's just uh, too many. No, 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 everything wrong. Yeah. No, it's a different world, man. Yeah. Um, I'll say, I'll kind of make a comment about the funnel in general. I, I want to say that I feel like the DCC funnel is one of the things that, uh, not, it, it sets Dungeon Crawl Classics off, but it, I think it also is one of the reasons why we have such good players and GMs. Hear me out. I believe that like, if you get a bunch of gamers together and you say, okay, we're going to play a new game here today. It's a fantasy game, but you're going to have no fantastic powers in the beginning. You're going to play four zero-level schlebs. If you're lucky, you'll get a pitchfork. If not, you're going to have a quill. And it's, you know, whoever survives this horrifying you know, adventure I'm going to run today then they're going to go ahead and survive and they'll go on. Then they'll get a, then they'll get a class level and, and some, you know, then they'll have some survivability. But until then, you know, they're all up against the wall at all times. The kind of players who, people who are like, oh my gosh, I want to play that right now. That sounds amazing. Like those people are fun to play with. You know what I'm saying? If you're, if you can get into the funnel experience, I feel like you're going to be like a cool guy to play with. Like someone who's like really can have fun with that. And the kind of player who's like, that doesn't sound like my cup of tea. I really want to like, you know, you know, tailor my character to a backstory that I have in mind. Not always, but maybe, you know, a harder player to deal with, and, you know. Yeah. Well, you can play DCC Lankmar if that's what you want. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, got rid of that pesky funnel. That's <laughs> um, we, uh, we have a question from ACO13. It's not really a funnel question, but we will address it anyway because because uh, this is, you know, the, we, we are here to help people out. But uh, sure. uh, when somebody goes from zero to first and becomes a wizard and spell burned, do you have them recovered by the first adventure at first level or are they still recovering from the spell burn? No, that's, you know, um, you know I don't Ooh, know. That's if, a good I, yeah, I mean, I you know me personally, I think what I would do because there, you can't, I, you can't, you can't have a freebie. You can't believe there's nothing like like oh I'm going to spell burn thirty points when I cast you know invoke like you know contact patron patron bond and then you know be able to cast invoke patron seven times a week. What I would do is I would probably say something like okay you can spell burn and I'm going to roll this ten sided die and that's how many spell that's how much points you get back by the start of the first adventure. You know like I might do something like that leave it completely random so you then then the player has to choose. Is it you know like you know like am I willing to risk burning 10, 12 points when I might only get one back? You know, before the adventure begins. So that that's yeah. how I personally I would do it. You guys have any any uh, any other ways you might handle it? Just that I do the same thing with luck, where when I do transfer, like go from a funnel to a higher level thing, you know, it's like all right, you know, like you know, you you you'll get a few points of luck back, but you know what I mean. You're not going to be, you know, I'll give them like a luck point for making the first level and surviving the funnel, usually. But uh, you know, I, I think they're still. I I I like them to still be on the trail to like earn that luck back, so they can really. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I it's, it's, you know, there's definitely has to be a risk, risk versus reward thing. And if you're just like, okay, you know, it's been six months since you did this and you're back fine and everything, I, then there's, there's no, there's no risk to it. Like, yeah, that's... you've cheapened the spell burn, right? I mean, the, yeah. there should be consequence to the, to all that spell burn. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can do that. Oh, you can spell burn all you want, but then you have to make a luck check. And if you're able to check, that's when the barbarians decide to sack your town. And you know, like, 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 like yep. Hilarious. Oh. So, yeah. Um, so any, so okay. So we talked about a lot of things which, uh, which, which funnels should have, and I think I, I think I have, I have spoken myself of what I think funnels should not have. Uh, any of you guys have uh, any opinions on what you know what is should be kind of left out of a funnel or, or what you don't find necessary in one? Well, um, I, you know, I, I think it's good to um, maybe not pile on like this is one of my early issues is like I've piled I've I have run funnels before like home campaign things where I've just piled on too much treasure 
Um, and I, I, they, they walk out of there with like, you know, enough where they go into their first first level dungeon and every fighter's in plate mail. You know what I mean? Every, they're all like, you know, they're all riding horseback with war saddles. I mean, I, I've done that before. I, I think you gotta be judicious about how much money you give out in these things. I mean, it's cool to give out, I, I think equipment is a better, you know, a better, you know, thing to give away than, than actual gold um, for the most part. I mean, if you, if you think about it, if you have a, if you, you know, come out of a funnel and you got that much money, hey, maybe you go back to your village. Now, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I got 600 gold pieces. I'm going to open a bar, you know, skip all that, you know, adventure and things. Um, mm. So um, yeah, I think, you know, be, give a judicious amount of cash. They have something, you know, to, to start them off on, but they're not like, you know, they, they, the, the, the money they get from their first level adventures should still be very much needed to further their adventuring careers. Right. Yeah, I, th I think you're, I think I'm totally in that camp as well. Yeah. I mean, because considering, considering DCC uh, in general is kind of a low, low monetary economy, you know, like that, that's one of the things that Joe stressed from the very beginning when we were writing adventures. It was like, do not use 3.5 level treasure and stuff like that. You know, it's like, yeah. They get out of here with with a couple of gold pieces and a bunch of silver pieces then they consider them happy you know so so am i allowed to be controversial here oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, uh, you I, can direct I, all your I, hate I mail care care of terry olson <laughs> on my behalf what? What? <laughs> what 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 a funnel for me personally you hear it all the time about the lethality and the tpks and, and to me funnels should not be solely focused on combat um I, I, that that's my take on it like sure there's going to be combat but combat for i say it all the time combat for combat's sake is boring combat has to have consequence so it has to push your story um uh just having a series of combats all in a row uh, um it's going to be boring and uh and it, uh it's better off to have combat that's meaningful and then like elements of exploration or you know puzzles or mystery uh, all woven into the adventure um, I always hear when people describe their funnel is how many people or how many PCs they killed. And, you know, that's just not me. Uh, and, and granted, if, it, if that's you, that's cool. Uh, that's your funnel. That's great. But I think if you if you treat it a little bit differently, I think you can get a lot more out of the funnel. But that's my personal opinion. Like I said, all the hate mail can go to Terry. Um, Bring it. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that, you know, those are rules for a good adventure, not just a, well, a, a good funnel. Right. Yes. I mean, yeah, they're not specific to that. I, I don't think I don't think that's controversial at all. I mean, yeah. I, I think that uh, I mean the if, because I mean, frankly, the last thing you want to do is like roll for combat and everything. And what you what you bring up is like you get you know like there is this and again it's it's us kind of, it's it's you know it's like it's like you know like we we've kind of inadvertently created this atmosphere where like killing PCs is some sort of street cred, and you yeah, know and, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. and that is that that's the funnel of it. And it's not. I mean, I. That's why. Again, that's why I'm a big proponent of one session. Get the funnel done. You know, kill off. You know, get get them down to a manageable level, and then and then everybody's like, oh, DCC is so lethal and everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. It means lethal until your first level, and you have lay on hands, and you know, like all the rest of that stuff, and you know. Um. But but definitely, I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's something that we ourselves have inadvertently kind of you know created. Like the mo like we you know we let you know we created like the monster has escaped like we just we need Stephen Newton at this it's like we're talking about like, you know, <laughs> like I think because it was, something and it's run amok you know <laughs> yeah I think because it was such a breath of fresh air for a lot of people to actually see characters dying right in, in yeah, adventure yeah. that uh, the pendulum people, swung yeah, yeah and then people kind yeah. of focused on that and I'm like you're really short yourself you mm -hmm. know you're you're short changing yourself if that's all you're focused on on your funnel. We deal with this uh, in in the tournament writing quite a bit. You know, it's it's not um, the art isn't killing the PCs. The art is helping the PCs to kill themselves, right? I mean, they 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 should feel like it's on them at the end of the day. It's not it. You know, it's it it wasn't the encounter. It wasn't that the encounter was too hard or that the monster was too difficult. You know, they they should look at that death and instantly know that they blew it and and think about something else they could have done right you, you need to enable them to cause their own demise i mean just right. wiping them out is easy what do you guys think about because this is something that is definitely it was it was kind of um industry standard back in the day and their sense has gone around but like you know save versus death or or as, as oh save as it, yeah. now save versus suck <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> Like, like, do you, you know, like, does that have the place in the funnel? Is like, you know, is should there be yes. a thing like, okay, I can roll a die and I Absolutely. can die, you know, if I, you know, if I roll a three, you know. 
I so thank you for bringing that up. That was one thing I thought about, but didn't put down in my notes. Is that yeah? I, I think I think Save or Die has a total place in the funnel. I don't think it has a place beyond the funnel. Right. You know, I, I think it's I think it's a cheap shot outside of the funnel, but but in the funnel because almost anything can kill you anyway. Save or Die fits right in, right? Very much so. Yeah. And it, yeah. And it, and 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 and, it, and as you go on, like you know, don't make it so like they you know they just they inadvertently you know like they inadvertently walk in a room and save versus death you know like for no reason whatsoever. It should oh, be yeah. like the 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 eyes of the statue are glowing. It looks like you <laughs> yeah. could stick your fingers in his eyes if you wanted to. Right. So, right. Oh right. crap! Yeah. All right. Terry Olson wrote this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like uh, yeah. this skull is rising up, and it has gems in its eyes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Never played that adventure. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm a personally, I'm a big fan of like random effects. You know, like I, you know, like I have in in like the the war crawl, the one around the summer. There's like a skeleton with like a crown on its head, and he had a pair of dice in front of it and everything. You know, and like so many, so there, there's like there was like, like we literally had like 20 minute discussions. So like the player like. Uh, should we roll that dice? I don't know, man. I, I don't want to roll them dice. You know, like you know, someone. <laughs> and of course, people roll the dice, and some good things happen to them, and some not so good things happen to other people. Right. So, but uh, but I think that definitely has a place in the funnel. Randomness, yeah, that's something. I am a big I'm a big fan of randomness in general. But if I can introduce yeah. you to a funnel, again, yeah. establishing what the rest of the campaign is going to be like. If it's like you know, if it's a Mike Curtis campaign, you know, it's, there is going to be random elements in it. So you know. <laughs> so. I see a lot of people uh, asking questions uh, about mechanics for um, for funnels, like uh, you know, what is the you know, perfect amount of uh, creatures against a, a, a party of you know sixteen characters, or what's the DC to stop the statue from spinning in Portal Under the Stars? And and my answer to that all the time is, uh, you know, going off what you guys are saying, is um, bad mechanics will break your game, but good mechanics won't make it right? It'll never make your game. No one leaves an adventure talking about how they, oh, I, I got to roll a D30 on that went up one on the dice chain, or uh, they leave your game. And when they tell a story, they tell about how, I don't know, they brain the Chefton with a, with a beef bone. You know what I mean? They don't really care about the mechanics behind it. So when you're designing your funnel, if my advice to anybody is like we were talking about earlier, be fast and loose with the mechanics, with the, you know, the creature's hit points. And it doesn't really matter in the end. Um, as long as you're telling a story or it's thematic when it's when it's over, um. I, I I agree with that. I, I I have one. This is this is from from running many actually running many DCC games of it. If you if you're designing a funnel and you definitely you want to winnow you want to you know winnow down some characters a little bit. You know, like don't don't worry too much about what the attack what the the characters like the monsters attack modifier or damage is going to be. If you're going to fudge anything, initiative modifier. Because especially yeah. if there's like four <laughs> monsters oh and there's like God. 16 zero level characters, and it's okay to give a plus 10 initiative modifier because you know when you roll that one, you know, it's like, you know, like, oh, okay, so are you are you guys just roll 16 hit 16 times and I'll yeah. subtract the four hit points each monster has yeah. and like that encounter is over, you know. You know? Or or if you do have a group, roll uh, roll uh, initiative individually for them. You know, so at least, <laughs> it's like, at least, like, if you have four monsters, this way, at least, you know, like, monster one is going at 18, totally. monster three is going at three, rather than, like, they're going to sit there and get battered on for, you know, by every other member of the party, you know, before they yeah. get to do anything. Yeah. 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 I've had a, a lot of, the, the couple of times that I've had, like, you know, 20 players go in the hole in the sky and 18 players came out, it's always because if I roll three bad initiatives, which is very easy to do, and I stick by my guns and go, well, I rolled it, there it is, then yeah, you know, 20 guys with clubs can beat down a whole lot of monster, you know what I mean? And uh, put pay to a lot of encounters before they even have a chance to do anything. So yeah, you're right, yeah, you're right. Um, so we, uh, we, uh, we have a question about the, uh, from uh, JJ Chose, uh, Chose coming in. If you have that super ingrained 4E or 5E player who charges in, how do you teach the lethality of the game without making them feeling cheated or overran? Before they kill all their PCs, I I think what you do is you let them die once or twice, and then like maybe like when they're get like that third level character in, you might be like, you know, it's okay to step outside the role of a you know, or like what's your intelligence again? Oh, it's a thirteen. Well, you kind of remember what happened to Bob and you know Megan there. You know, it's like maybe you want to rethink this. You know, um, that's I mean, okay with that. It's you know, um, 
it's you know it's I and there's there's only I mean you can't literally play you can't play another character's characters for them. You can you know they either have to learn or you know you or you get a ringer at the play at the table. You know somebody who knows how to play these games. You're like when 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 Steve starts throwing his fourth character into like the into the giant mouth. You know maybe you should like kind of nudge him like maybe we let you know Steve you know like like you know Joe here to handle this or something. That, yeah. That's yeah. But there I mean. Uh... There should be some basic expectations set when you're gonna when you're gonna play with some people, you know. I, I guess it's not always possible in a con situation, but uh, that friend should at least have an idea that they're playing a lethal game, you know. Right. And it's like it's like the Dark Souls video game; you will die, right? There there should be there should be some kind of of acknowledgement that and some discussion, right? You don't want someone right. to have a bummer of a time just because they're playing a game they didn't know they were playing. Yeah, no, nothing. Nothing beats honest communication, and more importantly, player buy-in. You know, because yep. you know, if you're like, I'm going to run DCC for my five E friends, and they all they want to play is five E. You know, like it's okay for the run a funnel for them or something. But you know, it's a, like I like like Brendan and I were having a discussion on the show a couple of weeks ago. It's like we like some of us are permanent judges. You know, it's like <laughs> we have a gaming group, and when when we're going to run, like what are we playing? Whatever you feel like running, because you know. So um, I like the so, chat. Yeah, definitely have that conversation if you know the player might be if you know the player impression might be one of the ones you do you might want to say this is a very lethal game at least for this funnel area so be smart you know so yeah yeah i like to challenge my players like me me, you know tell them uh you know try to keep your guys alive because there's nothing you know sometimes people want to go in there and try to burn through as many pcs treat it like a video game with unlimited lives Mm -hmm. just doing stupid thing after stupid thing so i like to just challenge them a simple thing like try to keep your guys alive i think my game's smarter than you prove me wrong and that usually and it's it's done in fun but that gets people going like oh yeah i'll you know what i'll i'll put some guys through this thing alive and it becomes this little competition or whatever meanwhile it's not it's just a game but you know i i always throw that in there try to keep your guys alive see what happens that makes me think of something though how do you guys account for uh for funnel specific player strategies and and what i'm thinking of here is the the player that has his favorite pc and and keeps them in the back you know he sends he sends he or she sends the three pcs that they're not worried about into the action and keeps their favorite one hung back do you guys penalize uh no. people for that or do you have any mechanic built in or you just let that ride uh, no that's oh, that's okay. using i mean that's using ablative armor i mean but the other side you have to realize if you're going to use all three of your characters in these shields I mean, you know, like I, I won't purposely like, oh, then I'm definitely going to kill this character. But you know, there might be a case where, like, all right, I might, you know, like I, I have no problem like having, like, you know, like, well, because again, it's hard to keep track of where 16 characters are at any time, especially if you're playing like on virtual tabletop or something like that. Or I might be like, okay, out of you, who has the worst luck? And you know, Mister, I'm, you know, Mister Precious Snowflake character might have, you know, might have the worst luck. And like, I'm sorry, you're going to have to make a will save, otherwise, you now your brain is just exploded. You know, I mean, you know, and there's, you know, there's nothing I can do about that, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, but yeah. I won't, I won't, I won't personally penalize somebody for playing smart like that. Yeah, I'm, I, but I, the only way I, I temper that at all is by rewarding folks who go in the opposite direction. You know what I mean? Who mm-hmm. clearly have that one heroic character who they always put up towards the front, whatever happens, or, um, or like, like every time, like I've, I've seen it a handful of times where, due to circumstances. At some point, they're going to have one of their characters actually attacking another one of their characters. That guy gets a luck point. You know what I'm saying? Like that—that's you know, yeah. You know, like to me, like like in other words, not acting like you have four disposable characters. You only have to get through with one, but actually like making them individuals and point of view. Like I'm not climbing that thing with the laser eyes. You know, like I, yeah. you know, I try to really penalize that. I, I love like you know when when someone when someone plays someone like. Like trying to like talk their other character into doing it. Uh, give me that all day, you know. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. can't hide forever, Terry. Right. Well, Your character it's funny. can't hide in the back forever. And I like to throw in things that are good for the characters. So their exploration might lead to something good. They get a buff or a bonus or find an item that makes them start thinking. Oh, maybe I shouldn't always hang out in the back. Maybe yeah. some good things hanging around in this adventure too. I'm uh, gonna hide so, right now. Yeah. Well, you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, uh, guys, it is uh, back it's about 54, so we, we should wrap things up. Uh, and so, so uh, Brendan, one final thing to say about funnels. Do you have anything? Yeah, if, uh, if you're going to design for DCC, creating your first funnel should be like putting together your lightsaber. 
do it, love it, craft it. I want to see, I, I, I want, I want to see a million funnels out there. They don't all have to be like, you know, follow the rules, but like, I want to see yours. I want to see your point of view on a funnel looks like. Okay. Margio. Uh, it's not about funnels, but just in life general, never skip leg day, never miss game night. They're both equally good for you. All right. And Terry, uh, make sure it's fun, no matter what, right. The, the ending should, the players should feel like they accomplished something. They should have a good time. It's a game. Right. Yep. That's I mean, that's a, if anything, right, right at the top of your judge's screen, no boring stuff. And look, every time you run a game, look at that. All right. So, you know, all right. So thank you very much for joining us for this inaugural session of uh, Zero Level Funnels by people who think they know better. Uh, so uh, we, we may be doing these more of these, perhaps even one day in person somewhere at a convention. once oh. so, uh, so thank you very much. And I think we are out of here. A lot of take us away. <laughs>